Hello everyone and welcome to a very nice game that was played in the 1925 Paris tournament. Uh, it was a double round robin featuring five uh, of the very strong players. Uh, Alexander Alekhin here, uh, Evgeny Alexandrovich Novskoborovsky, uh, Savely Tartakover, uh, Karol Opatsensky and uh, Edgar Cole. And uh, well, there were a lot of very nice games played in this tournament, but this one is considered to be uh, the, the, the craziest game uh, that was played there. So it's, uh, like I said, 1925, Capablanca still reigns supreme. It will be another two years until uh, Alexander Alekhin challenges Capablanca for the title. But until then, uh, we will uh, check out games, uh, well, nice games like, like this one here. So without further ado, uh, Znosko Borowski opens with uh, e4. And uh, as the title suggests, Alekhin goes for the Alekhin's defense. We have knight to f6, uh, e5, uh, accepting the Alekhin's defense, knight to d5, and now c4, going for the four, four pawns attack against uh, the Alekhin's defense. Knight to b6, we have d4, d6, and now f4. So let's see how Alekhin plays this. We have d captures on e5, uh, early trade in the center, f captures on e5, and now knight to c6, putting pressure on the d4 pawn. Uh, so white defends with bishop to e3, uh, and now uh, continuing development, bishop to f5 to the most active square available to the bishop. Uh, knight to f3, and then now comes e6. The bishop has been developed, so you can now uh, close up uh, the, the pawn structure and prepare to develop your dark square bishop wherever you uh, wherever you, uh, you know, prefer. Uh, we have knight to c3, and now in modern chess this is uh, still played uh, today in 2019. Uh, you will see ideas like bishop to e7, maybe bishop to g4, but in those days in the pre-engine era you could try a lot of uh, nasty ideas. So here Alekhin goes for knight to b4, and uh, he's clearing the path for his uh, c5 pawn, he uh, for his c pawn. He wants to play c5, but already it, it comes with a threat, so you can't just play a3 because the knight c2 check will pick up the rook. So you have to first deal with that. We have rook to c1 and now c5. Uh, so getting rid of the uh, the c, uh, c7 pawn, making it a c5 pawn. Now the knight can always retreat and you are uh, striking in the center once again. So here a3, pushing the knight back and now not allowing knight to c6 and the d5. So Alekhin just trades in the center. c captures on d4. Uh, and now you, white could play bishop captures on d4, it's not a problem, and then the knight is still under attack, you go back with the knight, and the game continues. Uh, but it wouldn't be uh, one of the craziest games uh, in this tournament if, if uh, you know, just bishop captures on d4 was played here. So uh, uh, white goes for bishop to g5, attacking Alekhin's queen, and he's basically expecting f6 or bishop to e7 here. Uh, with, uh, with bishop to e7 you just trade, captures, captures, and then the, the knight that is under attack goes back, for example, knight to b5, and then you will, uh, well, knight to d6 is a threat, and all sorts of uh, ideas uh, are looking very good for white. On the other hand, after bishop to g5, you could always play f6, and then you're going to have something like e captures, g captures, uh, and now knight captures on d4, where if uh, pawn captures here, pawn will capture, uh, capture here. So, for example, captures, captures, uh, and now, again, the game continues. But here, uh, after bishop to g5, Alekhin played uh, something very different, uh, something you might have seen in, in the thumbnail. It's uh, d captures on c3. So here, uh, Alekhin grabbed a piece, and he's offering his queen. If you don't grab the queen, you just lost a piece, so you might as well take it. Uh, bishop capture on d8 was played, rook capture on d8, uh, at attacking white's queen, and now queen to b3. Uh, now there's pressure on the black knight here, uh, but uh, first uh, c captures on b2 with an attack on the rook. Black plays this move. Uh, he wants the queen to come to b2 so he can get this knight into the game with the tempo on the queen. So queen captures on b2. Knight to a4, attack, knight uh, to a4, attacking the queen, and now what do you do with the queen? It's not all that clear where the queen has to go. For example, if queen b3, just knight c5 is very strong, and now if you capture the knight, then knight d3 check opens up a discovery. Uh, you will capture, bishop captures with check, you're gonna move the king, or capture, or capture the bishop and then rook captures on d3, and you get this uh, position where black is just up a pawn in, in a better position. So you have to be very careful what you do here after knight to a4 and your queen is under attack. So queen to a1 by Znosko Borowski and now uh, you could go for uh, some knight d3 ideas but Alekhin chooses uh, the straightforward one knight to c2 check. The queen and king are now forked and uh, white will have to give up the rook. So rook captures on c2, bishop captures on c2 and now uh, you don't want to allow something like knight uh, rook to d1 anytime soon. So knight to d4 blocking the d file from black's rook and 
also putting pressure on the bishop on c2. We have bishop back to g6 by Alekhin and now c5, a very important move as it clears uh, the way for white's bishop to come into the game. And uh, what do you do here? Well, you will grab the knight. Here, Alekhin grabs it with the knight. Knight captures on c5, but it was also possible to capture it with the bishop. It doesn't matter that white has this uh, bishop to b5 check. You don't really... Uh, win, win a piece here because after the king moves your knight is also under attack so here uh, you have to play something like knight to b3 because if you go into this trade for example captures captures now the other rook comes into the game the bishop on a4 is under attack and the black would just be winning here for example you move the bishop uh, rook e4 check you try and get the king over to the d file to get this rook into the game with tempo and white will have very little to say about this for example if king f1 just uh, rook f4 check King back to e1, you're gonna go bishop uh, f2 check. If you play king e2, then bishop h5 check. Now you finally force the king. Uh, you can't go to f1, just bishop d4 opens up a discovery, wins the queen. So you have to go uh, to the d file, and then the rook enters the game. And now black will just be able to win this very quickly. So after c5, uh, like I said, bishop captures on c5 can be played, and it seems like a better idea as you definitely want to get this bishop into the game as soon as possible to, to either castle or uh, somehow get the other rook into the game. But Alekhin chooses the, uh, the other line. Knight captures on c5. And okay, bishop to b5 check with knight to d7 blocking and now queen to c3. Uh, with a6 by Alekhin uh, trying to get this attacker away from there, either capture on d7 or remove the bishop away so I can start developing my bishop and get my uh, the, uh, other rook into the game as well. Uh, bishop captures on d7 by Znoskoborovsky, rook captures on d7 and now queen to c8 check. Uh, rook to d8 by Alekhin and now queen captures on b7, basically forcing Alekhin to capture on d4. Uh, if you don't want to capture on d4, you don't really have other good options. For example, you could try bishop captures on a3 to try and get your rook uh, into the game as quickly as possible, but then you just get queen c6 check. Uh, you can't go to e7 because of queen c7 check, followed by knight to c6 check. You have to go to f8. And then you just get castles and you have all sorts of uh, uh, nasty threats here. For example, knight captures here is a threat because the king is on the same file as the rook. And if you capture it, then you get queen to c8, check king e7, and you win the rook on h8. So this is the problem if you don't capture the knight. But it's not so uh, easy to capture the knight. Uh, here, Alekhin captures the knight. Uh, and now we have queen to c6, check. And okay, rook goes back to d7, you just grab the knight on d4, so that's always uh, always good, always great. Uh, and here comes uh, castles. And uh, again, Alekhin has some problems here, although he definitely has compensation for his sacrificed queen. But until he gets this bishop and this rook into the game, it's, uh, it's not uh, a simple idea. For example, if just bishop captures on a3, do you see what, uh, what white has here to, to gain great advantage? Uh, of course you do, you just attack the pin piece, so rook to d1, and you have problems here. Uh, bishop to c5 check, you will not, uh, of course, see queen captures, you'll see just king to f1, and now there's really no, no good move for, for black, you're gonna lose this rook on d7. So here, uh, even if you don't capture an a3, rook to d1 is a pretty big threat. So Alekhin deals with it with bishop to d3. His plan is, okay, I'm uh, maneuvering uh, my bishop uh, without wasting time as I'm attacking the rook on f1, and I want to get this bishop to b5 to defend my rook on d7. Uh, and now, well, you could play something like this, rook d1, bishop to b5, which is fine, uh, but here uh, Znoskobrovsky finds a very interesting maneuver, rook captures on f7. His idea is, of course, that if king captures, queen captures on d7, check, king has to move, and then you also pick up the bishop on d3, and then, of course, you're, you're just winning. Uh, so, Alekhin tries bishop to c5 check here. Now, his idea is that if queen captures, he just uh, picks up the rook, and he's just better here. Uh, so, uh, of course, you, you have to uh, uh, play something else. You cannot capture the bishop on c5. We have king to h1. Just uh, getting the king away from there. It's your only move other than capturing the bishop. And now comes bishop to b5. Alekhin here has to decide whether he wants to go bishop to b5, save the rook that way, or bishop to e7. It's also possible just preventing the attack. Uh, but uh, then you get queen captures on e6, uh, and after bishop to g6 pushing the rook back, rook f1, uh, you still have problems developing. You cannot get this rook into the game. Just rook f8, for example, loses to rook captures on f8. The bishop is pinned, so you have to capture with the king, and then 
queen captures here, it's queen against two bishops, uh, white would be winning here. So Alekhin goes for bishop to b5, just uh, pushing the queen back with queen captures on e6 with check, uh, rook to e7, and now rook captures on e7, attacking the queen, uh, sorry, uh, <laughs> checking the king, now bishop captures, blocking uh, check, and now queen to c8 check. So what do you do here? Uh, well, uh, your one option is to play king to f7, but that obviously uh, loses the rook on h8. Your only other option is bishop to d8, and this is what Aliyahin played. Uh, here we have queen to e6 check, uh, Aliyahin blocks, bishop to e7, we have queen to c8 check, bishop to d8, and now queen to e6 check, and it was in this position after all this craziness and, uh, well, uh, bloodshed uh, that Aliyahin and Zdoskoborovsky agreed to a draw. Uh, because uh, the problem is, if after queen to e6 check, Aliyahin uh, decides to go for some other plan uh, other than covering up with the bishop, bishop e7, bishop to d8, for example, if he plays bishop to f8, uh, uh, well, feel free to pause the video and try to find why Aliyahin decided not to even try this idea. Well, I give you a couple of seconds. So, uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations on finding such a, well, well, the only good idea for white in the position. And for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, uh, it's not queen f5 check. If queen f5 check, then black just goes king e7. Uh, you could try queen g5 check, king f7, and then even e6 check. Yes, you can play king captures, queen captures on g7, and then rook to e8. And you will have, uh, you know, won a lot of pawns on the queen on the king side. But after rook e7, the king will hide, and uh, this is now still anyone's game. Uh, it, the king will be able to hide behind all of the pieces, and uh, it's still a bishop pair and the rook against the queen. So uh, a lot of things can go wrong. If anyone's better here, it's actually black. So that's not the way to do it, queen to f5 check. If you found a4 on the other hand, then this is uh, most likely a winning position for white now. Uh, because you don't really have a good square for the bishop. You can't go here, you can't go here. Well, obviously, let's check out what happens if you capture the pawn here. If bishop captures on a4, then you play queen to c8, attacking the bishop here. And once the king defends it, now you play queen captures on a6 with an attack on this bishop. And finally, well, again, what do you do with the bishop? If bishop b3, then you just play uh, queen check and pick up the bishop. If you go uh, bishop to c2, just queen c6 check, picks up the bishop. If you go bishop all the way back, uh, still not a problem. Queen c6 check, followed by queen d6 check, will pick up the bishop in most of the lines. If not, there will be some nasty ideas with e6. So your only uh, option is to go back, but then you get e6, and finally the bishop is trapped. There are no squares left uh, for the bishop. You win the bishop, and then it's a queen against uh, a bishop and a rook, uh, just, uh, uh, just a, a winning endgame for white. So that's what happens uh, if after a4 you capture it. If you don't capture it, if you play something like bishop to e8, then the idea is queen to f5 check, king to g8, and now uh, queen to c8, and you lose uh, one of the bishops. Uh, black has nothing nothing good to play here. On the other hand, if after, uh, for example, a4, uh, you play something like bishop all the way back to e2, then it's queen d6 check, you connect the check with attacking the bishop on d8, bishop to e7, and now queen to b8 check, and now you just win the rook on h8, king f7, and queen captures rook. So that's why uh, after all of these uh, checks, Aliyahin decided it was best not to go to f8. It was best just to cover up with the dark square bishop. If he tried king to f8, uh, chances are that, of course, uh, Znosko Borowski would have played a4 and Aliyahin would have lost that game. Uh, but in the end, uh, the game ended in a draw and Aliyahin finished this tournament, uh, I believe, a point and a half ahead of everyone else without losing a single game. So it was a, it was a very nice uh, tournament victory for Alexander Aliyahin. Uh, but yeah, de definitely a, a crazy game. And uh, for those of you who maybe never even thought about playing Aliyahin's defense, maybe this game will give you some ideas on, on why it's such a rich opening. And for those of you who play it, maybe it will be, uh, again, give you some ideas on, on how to treat uh, s certain uh, lines in the opening. So uh, that's uh, the game. I do hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I would like to thank uh, Ellie Martinez, uh, Jason Murray, and uh, Nathan uh, Bakuizen for a contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. As usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you soon. Uh, checking up on your suggestions, and we will see, see what uh, else uh, will <laughs> we have uh, uh, to do before, before the start of the Isle of Man tournament. So thank you all. I will see you soon, and have an excellent rest of your day.